See, one way to put it is that the kingdom, the Basilaya, is an announcement. It's a proclamation of God's generous and expansive love for all. But such a message made people crucify an innocent man. How can a lovely kingdom like that make so many people angry? How can such a generous message incite violence and murder? And see here is where I believe the teachings of the American Christian Church and the teachings of Jesus, they seem to part ways. You know, there's a, an example of this. Is this brief history of the last 40 years of hate and fear in American Christianity. It just demonstrates how incongruent it is with the teachings of Jesus. Take, for example, the 1980s. The early spread of a new unknown disease, which today we know as the AIDS epidemic, killed millions of people. Some Christian leaders came on television and quickly responded early on by labeling the disease as the gay plague. Truly believing that this disease was God's punishment upon the gay community. How are you hearing? I mean, what a missed opportunity the American Christian Church is given this moment to share the kingdom, the Basilaya of God, to show love and grace to all, and instead they are driven by their hate and fear. And as millions passed away, most of the Christian church stood by the sidelines and further punished this community. And after the tragic events of 9-11 in New York City, the hosts of the show, the 700 Club, I'm sure you know that, the flagship show of the Christian Broadcasting Network partially blamed the acts on the gay community, suggesting that God had punished the U.S. because of the sin of the LGBT community. It is no wonder why the LGBT community does not trust American Christianity. It is no wonder why this community is missing from our pews today. The teachings do not match. They are incongruent. They seem to be in direct opposition. In fact, they are direct violation of Jesus' teaching. You see, we cannot dismiss the essence of the teachings of Jesus. We cannot just look at it and move on without giving it its proper attention. If I told you that here, since my arrival to Hawaii, year and a half now, that we've encountered phone calls, emails, I've had actual typed out letters sent to my office about how we're wrong and not Christian and not doing the right thing. Uh, Andrew has had spent hours probably talking to people who've knocked on the door, we've received phone calls. I can't tell you how many emails I've sent out to local clergy. I don't hear back at all. It's my opinion that it's because of this same thing. And yet, this morning, I think what needs to be done is there needs to be acknowledgement of it. But I think there also is a requirement for the church. And I think that requirement is repentance, Confession, <coughs> lament, and there needs to be reconciliation. You know, there are a lot of things that I've learned in seminary. I've been in seminary way too long in my life. Lutheran seminaries, evangelical seminaries, Pentecostal seminaries, things that I've had to unlearn, shall we say, from all those years. No one necessarily teaches you to unlearn things. You kind of have to take it upon yourself. You need to make a choice when you see what is real and from God. And it's the same thing I think that we all need to do, is to make a choice as well. 
choose who do we want to be? Do we want to be this American Christian or do we want to be this Jesus student? Who do you want to be? Because in the in-between of life, how we manage the kingdom of God on earth, how we are good stewards or not good stewards of the love of God matters. How can the church practice healing and reconciliation if we're not willing to admit our culpability and complicity? How is Jesus going to be the savior of this entire world if we are not ready to admit our wrongdoings? See, I love Jesus because he's such a good steward with his words, with his teachings never once spoke a word against the LGBT community. Of course he wouldn't have. It's not his nature. Instead, he demonstrated the opposite, love and grace by dying on a cross, taking away our sins, burdens, mistakes, taking the hate and fear of the world and gave us his forgiveness, his love, his successes, his righteousness and resurrected from the dead, from the grave, to give us the greatest day in history, the, the apex of reality, the, the omega of history, to give us liberation and salvation. 